All right, today I'd like to start in on Unit 4. I call it websites. Really what we're talking about here is creating links so that we can link one page to another. We can link, if it's a long page, certain parts of a page to another page. Even link images. We're going to talk about all those kinds of things here. I think we can finish it in a couple of hours. We'll see how it goes. This is a starter. It's up on OneDrive if you like to follow along. The page itself is a fairly simple page. It's just a page that shows all of the topics that I cover in Microsoft Office. I created some ordered lists with ordered lists inside, etc. I have some images, some extra pages that we'll get to a little later, and a CSS file. So I'm going to start by opening up the index file and the CSS file. It's one of the things I noticed right away was that when I look at this page, I've got item number five with one, two, three, four, five, 13 things inside. I think I'd rather see those as alphabet or alphabetical letters for those under, for those ones that are underneath the major topics. So I'm going to take a quick look at the index page here. It's got a body, it's got a header. There is a nav tag. This is new in HTML5. The nav tag is used for navigation bars, which is what we're going to turn that into. In a lot of my previous examples and probably some current ones as well, you'll see div tags. Those were short for division. They've been pretty much replaced with section tags. Here's a section of a document. Here's another section of the document. Here's another section of the document. Really interchangeable as far as I can tell. And some paragraphs and again a big huge ordered list with ordered lists inside them. And notice that my sub-items are called topics. So as a quick review, I'm going into my CSS links. My header already is formatted. Now I can create a topics class. And inside here, I want to set the list item style. List, is that right? Doesn't look quite right. Let's find out. Uh, lower dash alpha. Didn't turn color, so that's not right. List item style. Now, when all else fails, go back to the documentation. So I'm going back to my unit three notes here, real quick. And I'm going to go to my catalog that I have listed down here at the bottom list style type save refresh and that's better right, so just a quick example quick review of what we did before everything else was changed because of the header tag so my header up at the top is centered navy in color what we're going to be talking about today is how to link pages together. And there are a number of different ways, different things that we can link together. And then the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to create links that link from this page to itself. So if you have a very long page, you can navigate using these links. So I have the links that go to each one of these major six topics. So if I wanted to jump to PowerPoint, I would like to be able to click on PowerPoint and have it jump in this page. To that location. First thing I want to do is style this a little bit. Last year somebody said, Volker, in your website you do, this is an ordered list. How do you do that? So it goes across the page like that. So I used it as a demo. I think it's still pretty good, so we're going to do the same thing. So the first thing we're going to do is format my nav bar. So I have a nav bar, and inside the nav bar I have a bunch of list items. As if we look at that nav bar, up here. It's just a bunch of list items. And I don't want those with bullets underneath each other. I want them to be side by side with no bullets. So a couple of things you have to do to make that happen. I only want this to apply to the list items in my nav bar, and I only want it to apply to list items that are in my nav bar, otherwise all my lists then change, and I don't want that. So this says in the nav bar, any list items you have, let's set the list style type to none and then the display 
to inline. Inline displays these items instead of one on top of each other. The none takes the bullet off, but they'll still stack on top of each other. If I want them to display sideways, then I have to say inline. So let's see if that did what I expected it to. Save that. Come back here and refresh my page. Where'd my page go? Oops, wrong browser. Grief. There we go. F5. And there they go, going sideways. Now you might wonder where do these dashes come from? They're actually part of the text. Right, if we look at the items themselves, each of them is followed by a dash so that they're separated. If you don't do that, then they all show up one space apart. It looks like one big ugly word. When I format them, it won't be too bad, but I think the dashes help that nav bar. The next thing I think I'd like to have that centered, and I want my nav bar to stand out a little bit. That's the nav bar itself. And what I like to do in my CSS file is have the outermost containers listed first. And so here's my nav style, and then inside, here's my nav item lists. So there's some order to these things. I've also started putting all of my named styles together so I can find them. And they show up after, before, it doesn't really matter, my item styles. But that way it makes them a little easier to find if I'm looking for a named style. I've seen, I think Tim, didn't you alphabetize them or something like that? I've seen some where the styles are alphabetized. And so the header and then the nav and then the nav list and then the topics I happen to be alphabetized as well. How you organize this is up to you, but as Tim can tell you and I can tell you, sometimes these CSS files get so huge that finding your way around inside them can be difficult if you don't have some kind of logic to it. Tim? No, I was just... Oh, okay. Do you agree? Okay. <laughs> can I have a hallelujah? That's what somebody in my programming logic class is starting to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay, so here's my nav bar. I think I would like everything in there to be text align centered. That way it should center on the page. And I think I'm going to add a background color to make it stand out even more. And I'll use the hex code for CCC. That's a shortcut that I didn't see in too many of your notes. The CCC just means give me C is a hexadecimal value for 12. This is the equivalent of entering in six C's all the way across. It's a shortcut. Right, if I enter six C's, I will get a shade of gray, fairly light, because remember, all the values are the same. So this is a shortcut. If you want all the numbers to be the same, you only have to list it once. So if I put 6666 here, three sixes, I would get a darker shade of gray. So let's see what that looks like. And this is something I think some of you need to be a little more practice. Every time you make some changes, check to see how it works. I think some of you are putting in 800 changes and then checking to see how it works and then going, oh my God, which one's wrong? So there's my shaded background. Uh, what I don't like about it is that the bar goes all the way across, at least not in this page. <clears throat> in my page, you saw the nav bar kind of cruises all the way across, fills the whole page. But in this one, I don't have quite that much stuff, so I think I'm going to shrink it. How do I keep that shading from going all the way across the page? Set a width. Good. So for my nav bar, I'm going to say, you know what? I don't want you to fill the whole page. Let's go with 70%. Uh, See what that looks like. Save it. Take a look at it. F5. Okay. But now it's not centered. I thought I said text aligned. Well, the text is centered in that width. How do I get the object itself to shift? John, how do I get that? That's a nav bar. How do I get that to shift so that it's centered on the page? Anybody? The margins. The margins to what? To uh, auto, I believe. Auto, okay. If you set the margins to auto, and you can set them all, it doesn't hurt anything. If you set them all to auto, what, what the browser will do is take a look at this object, see that it's only 70% wide, and automatically figure out the left and right margins to accommodate it. 
Now, I didn't set the top and bottom margins here. I could have, but right now, up and down, there's no vertical alignment to worry about. So they don't hurt anything. So let's see if that makes the difference. There's my nav bar. And there's no rule that says your nav bar has to be under the title. It could be above your title. A lot of my pages lately, I've been putting them on the bottom of the page. When I take attendance, right, my nav bar is down here in my footer. So it doesn't clutter things up, particularly on pages like this where I really don't need the navigation bar very much. Most days, I'm taking roll, and that's it. So where you put the nav bar, that's, that's a design decision you get to decide. This one's at the top showing you how you can do inline list items. Couldn't I just type those as text instead of making, making them list items? Yeah, but then it's a little harder to add them. It's just a different technique that you'll see in certain places. Okay, so now I've got a style. Now let's get on to the meat of this here. We're supposed to be talking about linking. Right. How do I now use those to link to a different place on the page. If you're jumping to a different place on the page, it's often referred to as a bookmark, though that's just a terminology thing. It's a bookmark on my page that I want to jump to. To define a bookmark, you use IDs. So I'm going to go into those big section headers. Here's computer classics, and I'm going to give it an ID. ID equals computer basics. Here's another one, ID equals browsers. You can call these whatever you want. Normally it makes sense to give them some name that means something to you so that when you do define the link, you can use these names. An ID is used now for three different things, right? This is, the, well, this is the second one that you've seen. The first one is to apply an ID style to this, right? So if I wanted to style my browsers on all my pages, my browser item, whatever that is, on all my pages, I could do that. Those ID styles are used a whole lot less than they used to be. Primarily because, and I don't think I mentioned this, but notice there's a nav, but there's also a header tag. And there's also a footer tag that designate these as the header and footer of my page. There are also new tags that the browsers are just now catching up with. What we used to do down there at the bottom for the footer is create a div, give it an ID of footer, and then create a footer ID style. Now we don't have to. When I'm ready to do something with the footer, I just refer to it in my style page as footer because it's its own tag now. So we can use those. Okay, so i got a few more of these things to make here. Here's a list item. Word. So this is the second, I'm sorry, I got a little sidetracked. This is the second use of IDs. You can use them as bookmarks, places to jump to. And you can use them for both. I mean, you could use have a style for this and then jump to it later if you want to. You can mix and match that. And finally, a little later in the class, we'll use these IDs in JavaScript. You can assign IDs to just about anything and then jump to it or refer to it and modify it in JavaScript. Now I'm making these all lowercase today during uh, iOS class. Justin was working on his assignment and he was complaining because he just can't get used to not typing this stuff Camelback. There's no rule, except most browsers are case sensitive. JavaScript is case sensitive, so whatever rule you decide to apply as the IDs to these things, stick with it. Your company that you work for will probably have a standard. Most of the books I've read, if you look through the Murak book, he usually does everything in lowercase unless he has a reason not to. And we'll be back to JavaScript soon, and when we get there, the Camelback will come back. Okay, so now I have all these places that I can jump to. How do I actually jump there? And this will show you another reason why this is handy to have as list items, because it doesn't clutter it up quite so much. I can keep each one of my links in a separate place. All the links that we're going to talk about today are an A tag. That used to stand for, and still does, I guess, for anchor. But this really isn't an anchor, right? I'm not jumping to this place. I'm leaving from here. 
but it's an A tag that has not left. I'm going to end it, and inside the A tag, you put an HTML reference tag. Where do you want to go? I want to go to Computer Basics, that ID that I created. Not good enough. In HTML's mind, that is a page name, a file name, with no extension. If you want to jump to an ID, you have to prefix that with a pound sign. The A tag then surrounds what is it that you want the user to be able to click on. I could end it here, and then just the word computer would be the link, but I want the whole thing to be the link, so I'm going to move the end A tag out here. Save it, and now on my page, my computer basics looks like a link. Whoa, it turned blue, it's underlined. How'd that happen? It's the default behavior for the browser. You can change that. The user can change it. You can change it in HTML, but it's a bad idea. Why would you want to mess with somebody's browser settings? They set them that way for a reason. Okay. On this computer, on this virtual machine, the browser link is blue if it's not been visited, and it's underlined to designate it as a link. If I click on that, it should take me to Computer Basics. What normally happens is that page or that link one more time, that bookmark will come to the top of the screen. Unless it's so far down that it can't come up any higher, then it won't. But it'll be on your screen and you'll be able to see it. So that's it. Not too hard. So now I get to do all the rest of these real quick. And I think I'm going to steal this and paste it. And notice this is its own tag. I occasionally want to stick it inside the list item. That's not correct. It's its own tag. It has its own ending tag. It is a two-sided tag. If you forget, then you get one of these big, huge monster links that covers the whole page. Because there's no end A. And then just change the names. Is it browsers or browser? Looks like it's got an S. So there we go, we got links. Careful not to include the dashes because that helps separate these a little bit. And now I can click on these, should test each one. Can use the back tab, back button, excuse me, and backspace will work to take you back to the top of the page where you started. These are links and they're in that sequence, the history. Occasionally that's annoying. Microsoft Word works. I'm just hitting the backspace key. Access and PowerPoint. And notice how PowerPoint did not come to the top of the screen. It can't. There's not enough text below to push it all the way up. But everything else appeared at the top of the screen. <clears throat> and the amount of text you see, and it always appears if you have a nice small narrow window, it'll appear at the top of the screen. I've been talking without looking at my notes, that's always dangerous. Okay, so there's our href with a pound sign. Because we're jumping on the current page, follow it with an ID. If you wish, you can include a title. I'm just going to add it to the PowerPoint one as a demo. I don't do this for all of my links, but you can. Title equals, and you can put here whatever you want. Click to see the PowerPoint topics. And what that will give you is a tooltip. When I hover, I get my title. That's the appropriate attribute now to use for some of you who've got some experience in HTML. The old attributes are, for pictures in particular, the alt attribute. And that used to, in some browsers, bring up a tooltip like this. Not anymore. HTML5, you use title. You can use title on links. You can use title on images. I haven't tried it on other things. I don't know why I would want this to say something when I hover on it, but I think we have to have a mouse or an image or something 
for the title tag to work. And that's how you bring up a tooltip. The alt tag in images is used for something different now. It's what if the image isn't available, or what if a reader is reading this page, what kind of text do we want them to say? We want the reader to say. Okay, so we talked about that. Blue underline text. There is one automatic on-page link. Okay. Without having to define an ID for top, I can say jump to the top of the page. Okay. Now maybe I want the top of the page to be something other than the very, very top of the page. If that's the case, I define an ID equals top. Okay. <clears throat> But what I've done on a lot of my web pages is near the bottom, down here someplace over on the right, and I'll have a top of page link or something like that, or an image. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think maybe my syllabi have something like that, I forget. I use an icon. Right? And we'll see how to use images as links a little later. It's really not any comp more complicated, but that's how I get you back to the top of the page in my syllabus. But a simpler way is just to put a link here, some text. I'm going to come down to the bottom, and I was trying to decide between classes this part of that section or not. I don't think so. So I'm going to create a paragraph tag here and end it. The section, remember, is supposed to be a contextual thing. This is a section of my document. This is where I have all my total, all my outlines. This link is not part of the outline, so I wouldn't put it inside the section. Inside my paragraph, I can now create a top of page link. And that, once again, gets an A tag. href equals pound top. Don't have to define the ID. And it works anyways. So there's my top of page. Click it, and it takes me to the top. Not too many users remember the backspace key, but also remember the backspace key if you're doing fancy stuff. Sometimes it doesn't take you back to the top of the page. That just happens to be where I was last. Whenever you click on these in-page links, and you can have them all over the place, those of you doing uh, User docu or users manuals for your programs. It's very common right, to say this is and oh by the way go look at this it was up there or go look at this and it's down there and you can link all over the place. Brittany. Uh, so is the pound top is it like just on one page? To one and it seems to be and it works in all the browsers. Right? Is there like a list of other things? Uh, if there's others I haven't found them. Good question. But again, remember, if you don't want it to go to the very top of the page, maybe once I'm done looking at these, I just want to go to the nav bar, then I could go to the nav bar and give it an ID and say jump to the nav bar, and it will become the top of the page instead of the title. You can send it wherever you want. And you don't have to call it top. Top is built in. Now, is there a bottom? That would be interesting. But I haven't seen any others that are built in, but I haven't done a lot of research. The only one I need a lot or use a lot is top. I'm just going to spruce that up a little bit. I'm not real thrilled with this sitting down on the left margin, so I'm going to do a text align right. If I can type. Save it. There. So now it doesn't clutter up my text so much, and this is what I was doing in my... Uh, Syllabus, they're just kind of over here on the side, and you can click on. Questions about on page links? I think that's about it. Okay, I'm going to do something a little bizarre here. I'm going to stop the recording because this is a good place, it's a topic, and we're done. So I'm going to stop it.